what's up y'all it's me Tosh the C and in this particular video y'all I'm sorry y'all I know I wasn't here last week I have two videos that I didn't put up yet I was trying to upload and got my nerves they didn't seem to come up whatever like they supposed to but yeah y'all I'm definitely gonna try to live as much as I can this weekend from now on all right now here we, here we are we have a special episode loving hip-hop in Atlanta what season 4 episode what 12 and let me go review this shit. But shout out to my YouTube family. Now I'm a part of my YouTube family. Don't forget to subscribe. Just go ahead, subscribe, and like, share this video. And let's get into this shit. I really want to talk about a first comedian. Um, am I saying that you don't the latest name right? I hope I am. But the reason why I wanted to talk about this, y'all, is the fact that let me lean back because you know how I am. Um, the fact that we I, was it between there was problems between the young ladies that were in her and Don? Wasn't it Don and Dirty Murdy? That the, the, the what did I say? Dirty Money. I'm Murdy. I meant to say money didn't get along or something like that. A conflict and Camille, like I said, is mad talented. We ain't gonna lie to that. It's not a lot at all. But when we see her go to Deb's office, you know she just you know her. You know how she's still going for what Tony was saying, all this other stuff, shit, right? Now she went. And she went ahead and she wanted basically she checked wanted to have dead ask some questions and kind of want to see the track record looking at the track record and making it wonder like what can basically deb do for her and um if we all recall i'm just going by what i see glasses and all that even though she had made suggest of her go talk to deb she is the one who went to deb went to go talk to her and shit crying on the shoulder and went to ask her basically can you help me out the situation now she went and said that her husband was upset and blah 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 about you know like she was just caught no set at tony for basically so quick to sign you know the, the guideline of contract whatever right and you know dad was just like okay i'm ready to get this through you know basically start working that's what she thought community was coming in like you know they're going to start on working on their business relationship and getting that money but Camilla somewhat had, you know, like, was saying, like, basically having those conversations, like, you know, like she said, Tony says, you know, she should search out for more manager, um, you know, go looking more, and basically was trying to interpret and Deb started to realize, okay, what, the way you talking, because she basically was like, you know, this and here, and, and she was like, you know, like I said, the conflict, how this going to be between us as far as business relationship? She basically like this, like, well, it shouldn't matter, because I'm the one who brings the money in the household, so he ain't got nothing to say with him, right? And when Deb caught on, like, she was just talking, like, what you can do for me type of thing, blah, 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 blah. And then Deb asked her, so are you trying to say it's a privilege to work with you? And so she's basically like, well, you know, yes, it is. Um, and she was saying the stuff like, you know, basically, you know, like, uh, because Deb was like, you know, this is a bunch of damn garbage you're saying to me and stuff like that. You know, it's terms like when Camille's basically saying, like, you know, like, she's doing Deb a favor, even though she's the one who actually went to Deb and probably made that call. And on top of that, she was letting me know, like, she is so, has so much money, y'all. She makes money in her sleep. I swear, did we, I mean, that sounds like a perfect rap verse for somebody if they didn't already say, like, I got that much money back that I make money in my sleep. Even though we just seen in this season that one of the problems, and even someone, even someone I was last season somewhat, that they were about, like, student clothes and stuff, that it has been, and through their own mouths, that their asses had financial, some type of financial problems. And she said she had $70,000. What if they set up their life savings? She was saying like all the money. Didn't they say all the money? Or said most of or 95% point nine 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 and shit. But I could have sworn that their asses were the one who said there were financial problems. So if you make money or sleep, that means you should be able to accumulate every fucking damn time you go to sleep. Night, night, every fucking day. Unless you got a Sony or something like that. Um... When you go night night and shit, that means that every damn time, I know NK would night be hard because you want to say that night night shit. But what I'm saying is, if you're telling me you make money all day, every day, when you go to bed, then in a way, why was she so hesitant? Well, you know, even when you're rich, you know, to be, you know, most people I hope don't be sitting there just want to be throwing money away, just thinking they're going to use dollar bills to wipe, wipe their behinds when they go to the bathroom or whatever. But what I'm saying is, it's just the fact is the way that she's talking is totally different than what the vibe we've been getting, especially throughout this season with the appearances that her and her husband have has been somewhat of dreadfully financial, right? 
So why in the world then is you kind of coming at Deb like I got money just, you know, coming out like Rashida said last year, like fire come out her asshole. That's the same thing she's making some like she got money with the, you know, um excuse the pun, but remember Diddy's like saying money hanging out his anus and that's P. Diddy, Sean, Kofi Combs, Pub Daddy, Diddy, Diddy Smalls. I don't I'm, you know how many goddamn names Diddy got shit. But what I'm saying is, is that the way she's talking now. So, you know, Deb is like, you know what, well, basically, you know what, I don't want, I could tell brand your business, but I'm not going to say who it is. Comedians in the damn confessional say she wants to know where the hell she got that from. But it's kind of like, um, maybe from watching last, se you know, kind of watching last season, y'all was talking about, you know, the thing about a movie. I I I'm just saying this, maybe, you know, she heard, but she didn't want to go into your base like, I mean, you can take that going somewhere, something else with Deb. And, you know, Camille feels some type of way about why she wanted to stop the shit. I mean, you know, had a problem, like, you know, stop the shit from not answering her damn questions. But like I said, Camille kind of came in a way like she was the biggest star. Not only, like I said, she's a good songwriter. Even Deb said this herself in the last episode how they were talking about this. But you do kind of have to look Camille like, um, okay, um, all right. Still like your music. <laughs> I'm just saying that. Um, yeah, but... So we seen another scene. We might as well fast forward this there. But we don't see Camille until we see her at the club. And somehow we got word that Deb has already told um are we going to get in a minute. Rashida is there to club support her girl. And you know, Miss Camille lets Rashida know it did not go pretty that well. And then um we got we got somebody coming out the car and stuff in the back seat, and it's Tammy, Walker Flogger's wife, Deb's daughter in law, who comes and basically, it's like, you know, this place of business. And I felt like, she's just like, hi, how are you? I want to talk to you. Basically, I even talking to my mother-in-law. And, you know, Tammy's saying confessions. We don't play that. We go, we've been mother-in-laws and shit. And, uh, that's that. You know, then they get into some argument with you get security. And then we go to the credits at the end type of thing. But we see the next episode, like, towards the end. Because I think we have Tammy towards the door. And she talks to Rashida. And something about, something about she was talking about how Rashida's back and shit like that. Like, you know, she, uh, based on what they're trying to get. Like, Camilla plays double roles and shit like that. Like, one minute she makes him like she's cool as hell and shit. But really, she full of it too. So, we'll see how that goes. Now, let's get into Scrappy, Erica, slash, not branding situation. But them trying to work on something better. We see that Scrappy, is, I think, Bambi's over Scrappy House. He gives her this box. He got inspired by mom, his mama D and her ex-husband, soon to be husband again, and his proposal, right? And he feels some type of way like Bambi's been down through all this and then that, and she's been, you know, loyal and wearing that promise ring. So when he's bringing up the ring, y'all, we thinking maybe he might propose to her a little bit because he's bringing up the promise ring that she wears of his. And then he gives a box, Bambi feels like a special, she knows she's going to die, you know, I guess some happy, happiness, I hope, if he was going to propose. He gives a box, and it's the key to his house. And for Scrappy, he said, you know, he ain't ready, he ain't mentally married for marriage, Red. I'm glad he at least can, you know, like, like, be truthful and just be, you know, say that he ain't ready. But at the same time, he, you know, Bambi does give some truth, like, you know, if I have access to your home, that means I've access to your child, child so like, we already know. And I think she was a confessionalist. Erica doesn't like her, or whatever. And it's one of those things that you need to smooth this out over with and stuff like that. You know, you know that needs to be smoothed out. You know, which it should because it's unnecessary. You know, if life moves on and stuff like that, the kid you ought to be together, but you ought to learn how to co-parent. You know, for the sake of the child. You know, it's just because y'all ain't fucking no more don't mean you know that things have to be like. Or not together in the sense of a relationship, a situation, or whatever, don't mean that you know it's stop or y'all don't stop being together, like to keep it balanced for the child's, the child's children's sake, okay? So he decided to go over there, visit Erica, Erica, sewing some jeans and stuff. And Erica's like, We haven't been talking in a long time, blah, 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 blah. And he basically tells her he wants to smooth stuff out. You know, for the sake of their child and try to work with the lawyer's court stuff like that. Because, you know, but recently now, every time they see each other, it's argument over argument of lawyer stuff like that. So they kind of made an agreement that, you know, gave each other that. And their daughter's supposed to have a princess party and they realized to make some type of agreement. So they're supposed to be peace and still at the moment. Okay, so hopefully it does work out for the sake. Because, yeah. Now, let's get to the Mimi situation. Now, Mimi is going back. This time we don't see Jocelyn and Stevie in this episode, but she goes back to apologize for Jassy, uh, to Jassy Faye um, about it. And I thought she already would have did it already, but maybe, I don't know. But 
she went ahead to apologize. She didn't know about that situation. And, you know, Jazz face like this. Um, you know, he basically like, ja uh, 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 Jessica is so disrespectful enough that he don't want to fuck with her. But he do want to work for work with Tiffany Fox, okay? And Tiffany Fox already said, like, even though I guess I don't know if it should be a book it of uh, me about the book it agent or help her find at least for producers or something, but she doesn't want to, the manager she got, she like, nah. But um she meets with Tiffany Fox and she didn't get a chance to apologize to her neither. Overdue, she doing a lot of long overdues to apologize to her. And say that, you know, because she didn't apologize for Jessica Dodd thing and having a meeting together. She made a mistake and error. And, she, you know, she's like, she knew the game as far as management, but she's not new to the music business, okay? And Jeffrey Fox don't say, yeah, we make some money in the management thing. No, but we can make some money, blah, blah, blah. She still want to work, I guess, with Stevie J today. So, I don't know if um she's going to get up. But she did let her know that Jazzy Faye wants to work with her. Honestly, this is just me. But she should have just left it like, Jazzy Faye does, still does want to work with you. She didn't have to say, like, he don't want to work with Jay, uh, Jessica Dime and stuff like that. She could have left that long. You know, maybe that's just personal me. She could just say, you know, well, Jazz, it's Jazzy Faye still want to make a hit with you. So, she talking about she almost over the mixtape. Good to go. So, anyways, y'all, then she takes Jessica Dime to Jermaine Dupree. And when I think about Jessica Dupree, Mimi being in the room, I think about the first season when she was talking about all women get cheated on by every bitch, fat bitch, skinny bitch, bitches in wheelchairs, bitch, 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 and bitch, and bitch, and bitch, and bitch, okay? And then did y'all remember when that video came out in the beginning, y'all pay attention, she was so phase and of course she was like this i don't suck dick in the club uh, did y'all catch that if y'all were one that when mimi went off and went ham about how basically steve made fool you know about the thing is how that whole first season went down and before she went on that rant i heard her say that comment like she don't suck dick in the club and you know some dude you know kind of like i just say she was just so random about the shit i y'all do y'all remember that okay anyway but <laughs> but yeah, so Jermaine Dupri like this. We heard this on Disrespectful. He said, like, you know, he said this sounds like stripper cry music, but he could see it going somewhere, just see, you know, working your performances or something like that with performances. But he see potential that he he don't just have songs like hitting somewhere in the treasure chest somewhere and shit. But he can possibly work on you may know, maybe by working on her. So Jessica feels some type of way that you know she feels like Mimi. She realized Mimi came through and you know Mimi had that, you know, the brown envelope and like look this over your lawyer and said, like, you want to work with me? I'll work with you and we can work with this together okay so there's a potential that she may be on mf management or whatever and we obviously she didn't know too much about the uh, did jessica tell oh, i think jessica yeah she did tell about the jocelyn situation but we don't know yet if she's got well, obviously not yet got in touch with stevie and we'll go with that okay so let's get into this last situation of comical delights um now and no, actually, it's two situations. Now, Young Jock goes over to KD's house, whatever, right? And he has the divorce papers. And, you know, she's thinking about it. She's like, you know, Young Jock is in my heart, blah, blah, blah. Now, I can't understand yet, but she said they've been separated for years. And, you know, still, you know, still good if y'all on paper, if y'all married and, you you know, get y'all get legal paperwork, um, you know, you get legal separation and shit like that. But the same time is, I don't, that shouldn't have been enough to impress her neither because, but what we gather is that they've been separate, like, for what even the, who the wife even was telling about, or ex-wife now, uh, basically, she was saying as if they weren't around each other, you know, around each other for years, but she's like, she still holds that title, because legally, she, he is, you know, to a certain, that's her husband, you know what I mean? So, but that's not the one he was fucking with. What we gather is what we realized the, out the first three, the, besides the one, she, the, 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 I don't know who who the third big uh, child's mother is, whatever. But Cena has been the one he's been mainly going back and forth with. She's the only one that wants to keep fucking with him still and wants to work on his family, stuff like that, right? So he said he's going to break it off with Cena. He really wants to work it out with KD. Does he really want to work with KD? Now, KD was not a person that wanted to like take care of a man or I got this and I'll take care of you before you take care of me. Do you think Young Jock will be pursuing or not trying to be frugal? I don't know what side he is, but he either he's got money that because all these kids got paid for, maybe had, you know, cut back a little bit or, you know, some people, you know, if I got, if why I spend my money, if I can spend your shit, I mean, I'm just wanted. But at the same time, would he be trying to fight for Katie that much if that was the case? Alright, so, 
He goes with Cena. They some leaping bounds and one of those five plays to get his wherever, right? The nanny takes the two babies and Cena, you know, when he's talking on the side, he's like, you know what? We need to talk. And he's about to tell her and Cena says this, he has done this already to her before when she was pregnant that he was going to be with Katie. So he already gave a warning sign. You still want to fuck this? You really... <laughs> Well, he already had a parent anyway. Heck, I don't know, you know, with the kids thing, but I mean, I'm just saying. And Cena got mad, you know, cussing him out. Shit, and he like, when we around kids, and you know, maybe he shouldn't have told her that then. But at the same time, you know, you were telling your frustration, you're cussing, and she hitting him and stuff, and the damn thing with, the, you know, with kids are and all this other shit. And then, you know, because she's like, you, I think you don't get yourself together. I'm not jumping from bed to bed to bed. Which was true, like, you know, you're not trying to get yourself together. You sitting here just still continue the same pattern. And he's like, well, all the bitches, she yeah, should go with that. All the bitches that you fucked, you know, fucked over and stuff, fuck you. I'm saying fuck you for them, okay? But at the same time, she's still not ready to go because now she has went in the next episode. I don't know if it's going to come on tomorrow or not, but she and Carly Rae, what, Carly Rae, is he bothering you? Girl, who, girl, ain't you supposed to work on your, you know, your 800 business? Shit. Get money. Not, not fucking drama. Shit. Unless drama pays and we ain't talking about film or play. Shit. Fuck wrong with folks. Anyway, so, um, I'm just saying with that that's supposed to happen. So she's mad. Young Jock realized he just, because he said, but he didn't say it was over with. Did y'all, uh, did y'all peep what the fuck Young Jock was saying was he was making it seem like, you know what? I don't want to be committed. I'm working on this. It's not going to work right now. Maybe I was hearing stuff wrong or something like that, whatever, or playing farm hero song or something, some game. But I'm saying he could have sworn he said, like, he's going to postpone it. Katie already said, well, maybe he was seen her. Maybe he might win me back, but I don't know for sure and stuff like that. Now, let's get to the last part, Rashida, Kurt, and Miss, um, Miss Ashley Nicole. Now, we know Erica got her hand on, you know, the peephole, and she told my aunt to the door, and Ashley's like, why is y'all coming in here, blah, 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 and you know, here where she's like, where, you know, looking everywhere and stuff like that, like, we're looking for where wild on shit, and she looking for everywhere for Kirk, okay, and Erica, like, tapping her, and then we seen this, we see some girl, um, race, whatever, and she black shirt, and it just was so random, we see this chick that was in the room, and as soon as I seen the chick, I was like, um, that's not part of the crew or production company, nothing like that. Oh, oh, I get, I mean, I already know, like, oh, yeah, oh, okay, here we go. And Ashley has been turning up and going with this girl, her girl, for two years, okay? But at the same time, she did a lot of shit just to seem like, just to be a bit on the side, like she was not interested. Okay, we get it, just because you're not interested in Kirk or men, period, or whatever, you know. She still said a lot of side-wise shit. You know, people said words that never hurt me, but some people have got stuck down under the core in the earth, okay? If that's even possible. But you know what I mean by even just the way reckless you talk. Should even, like, sometimes give me a pity, whether it's on here, outside street, where people are like, I heard you been talking about me and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? It depends. But what I'm saying is, is that still, she just, like, she was like, okay, okay, whatever. Then Ash was like... He is in 31. Because even the girl was like, what is going on, baby? She was like, you know, she just been coming at me sideways and stuff like that. But, you know, the girl was like, okay, well, I know she's working. But, you know, she was like, she says a lot of stuff. Which, like I said, Ashley has said a lot of stuff. And, you know, across the line that would make people think that she was at least interested in Kirk. And even say, I'll do anything to stay on D-Law and everything like that, whatever. So, it's like, you know, you kind of made people, maybe a few of us question where you're going to fuck for tracks and shit, Okay. So, she goes to Kirk, Erica's in the lobby and stuff like that, she left her there, and she talks to Kirk, Kirk felt flattered that she was jealous and willing to fight for him in his turn, so he all got on the bed, you know, just that quick Lashita, you know, was so relieved, whatever, and so relieved that Ashley's not for but just in thinking like, well, you know, not to say this, but do you know, I mean, just because she relates to girl, you know, some people could go back for, I'm just saying. But, but, you know, Kirk just said, he found out, said, well, she likes girls. So I'm thinking, like, the way he was saying, it was so he seen a girlfriend. I don't know if he's talking about the hotel, blah, blah, blah. But she crossed the line, a lot of shit that she said that, you know, okay, whatever. Let's let's go on the storyline. Then Kirk asks Rashida to go do a photo shoot, Ashley Nicole, look at her outfit, supervise. 
And then they have a talk, and then Ashley realizes she said a lot of stuff she had no business saying, but she just said she should have kept it cordial, cool, and professional. But I'm like, you were cool. You didn't, did I see any hands that did this at any time when you were called Ashley Nicole? She did keep it somewhat cool in terms because the way Ashley Nicole talked, and she was allowed to say all those sentences. She didn't give, you know, if Rashida was really about Bible ready to do something, I think she was kind of in the circumstances because Ashley Nicole would have been able to only say fragments or be able to only say a noun and not a verb. So what I'm saying is, um, in terms of when she ran that mouth, but they came in terms of realize, you know, like be mature, move on. And Ashley Nicole said something. Um, that, you know, kind of, maybe that's why she has a mouth her way and try to look up to certain people. And I, um, send condolences for her as far as like, you know, her mother committed suicide five years ago. And she kind of said, you know, she just been through, you know, all this stuff. So they got in terms where she just like, just learning, you know, like certain stuff. Maybe it could be explained why she has such defense or like maybe she says certain things in my for you know like just maybe defensive or may appear like you know a person maybe you know being a bee and all this other stuff so um you know i don't really like talking when you got people where they like terminate you death and stuff like that or something serious i don't like like really you know saying bad but you know just hopefully they can move on with their things and you know she's gonna say like business wise maybe they can work on you know just moving and pass on and go from there okay but yeah but anyway y'all that's all that's it i next time with see video i definitely see y'all next when y'all pleasant night pleasant weekend and i definitely see y'all next video okay all right take